we worship and we're going to sing holy 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 together and if you are able will you stand with us as we sing this song this morning declaring the holiness of our of our god this morning as we worship and at the end of this song please feel free to be seated holy holy
You are exalted high. There's no equal to you, Lord. There is no equal. You are the only one true God. And we worship you today. And we stand in awe of who you are. And we thank you for all of your blessings to us in our lives, Lord. And we thank you that you're here with us today. You have gathered us together here in your name. And you're going to minister to your people today, Lord. And we love you and worship you and praise you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. I need thee every hour, most precious Lord. No tender voice like thine can be
thank you. We need you, Lord. We love you. We thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, I come to you. Let my heart be changed, renewed, flowing from the grace that I frustrating in God's waiting room, waiting for that answer. But he always hears, and he always answers. It might not be the way that we think it should be, or it would look like, but we can't grasp infinite. We just have, this is what we know, but God, he sees, it's already happened, he sees into the future, he knows what's best for us. And so now he just says, just come. Come and cast your cares on me. Just because I, I, I can take care of it. I can take care of it. I, I just, I, I picture it's the same relationship that he gave us. Father, I was a son. I'm now, I was a father. I have a son. I had a grandson. It's the same thing. Moms, dads. We know. We know what our kids are going to face most of the time. We can, we can try to steer them away from it. They don't listen. <laughs> they won't listen. And sometimes they have to learn the hard way. Isn't that us too? With our Heavenly Father, He knows. He said, oh, don't do that. Don't, don't go down that road. Now, all right, it's, you're gonna, it's not going to work. Be well. And then we can, oh, we come back and say, you know what? I need you. I'm more than ever before. I need you. And he says, absolutely. This infinite 
love and grace and mercy and care for his children that we have for ours. But his is on a much grander scale. You can't even comprehend it. But he says, hey, whatever you're going through, whatever, whatever's going on in your life, just, just give it to me. We have a wonderful testimony with Bonnie. I'm so thankful that Paul and Bonnie are here. Bonnie has gone through, they said that she had cancer. She's been going through tests, going back again tomorrow. They can't find anything. Praise God. Praise God. Yeah. Yeah. So, this is not just a ritual to kill time down here. This is a powerful time that you get up and you take a faith walk. And you take a faith walk. I love that. I'm going to take a faith walk and I'm going to get out just like Peter did. I'm going to take it. I'm going to come down and I believe. I'm going to reach out and I'm going to touch the hem of his garment today. That's what I'm going to do. Because whatever I'm going through is way bigger than anybody. Whatever. But he has the answer. So if you have a need, if you would come forward at this time, we're going to agree with you in prayer.
him in this place. Awesome in this place, mighty
morning for your peace that surpasses understanding, Lord. Lord, we stand here as your children, and we need renewing of our minds. We need restoration of relationships, Lord. We need healing of our bodies. We need your strength, Lord, and we need the joy of your salvation restored to us, Lord. Lord, we stand here as your children, thanking you for your peace and your love and your mercy and your grace. And we thank you that we know when we come before you, you hear us, Lord, when we cry out to you. When we come before you, Lord, earnestly seeking you. When we draw near to you, Lord, you draw near to us. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for the hope and the joy and the strength that we find in you alone. You alone are our healer, our provider, our peace, our restorer, our redeemer, our righteousness, our soon coming king. We bless your name. We praise your name this morning. We give you all the glory and all the praise. It all belongs to you, Lord. And we thank you this morning, Lord. We thank yes. you. Thank we you. thank you, Lord. Can thank we, you, Jesus. Can we sing the last verse of that song? Both verses are good. Let's sing the last verse. I don't know if you have it up there, David. You don't? Is it what a piece? What a treasure. What a treasure. I have in this wonderful peace. Very deep in the heart of my soul. So secure. So secure that no power can mine it away. While the years of eternity roll. Peace, peace, wonderful peace coming down from the front. this morning we're going to sing together bless the lord oh my soul and let's lift the rafters this morning with this song the sun comes up it's a new day dawning it's time to sing your song again whatever may pass and whatever lies before me let me be singing with the Worship is 
Thank you. God bless you. What a wonderful time of worship. <clears throat> yes. Yes, you yes you may, Paul. Just to make sure we cleared up. That's good. Thank you, Paul. Oh, isn't it great? Isn't it great? There's there's nothing that's too great for our God to do. Nothing. Nothing too he is there's no equal. No equal. We're gonna talk about hope today. Hope and waiting. And uh as we as we look at our world situation today, it looks hopeless. There's so many things out there that are going on that you just, you, it's just so disheartening when you see it, and, and, and uh, that's why I even quit watching it. I, you know, why keep watching a train wreck over and over again, you know, when you turn the TV on, right? It's just, a, it's just and, and, you know, I was talking last week to somebody, and, and really what we're seeing, you know, really amped up, I believe, it's, it's the battle uh, that Paul talks about in Ephesians 6. And it's not against flesh and blood, but it's against principalities. It's, uh, it's Satan. It's amping up. It's, it's a battle between good and evil, between good and evil. And, uh, and we're seeing that. And, and you know, I, I just, um, Stephanie had mentioned it the other day, and then I happened to see a, see a clip of it on, on TV yesterday of, uh, of, of Bernie Sanders um, grilling uh, this guy that uh, has just been appointed uh, to a position, I don't even know what the position, it doesn't matter, but he has to go before a confirmation uh, hearing, and, and Bernie Sanders is just grilling him be, uh, because he's a Christian, and, uh, and he says, uh, and it's very interesting, because I just went, wow, this is amazing, because he says, so, so what you're saying is, because of your belief, now he said, There's, there are, in this country, there are Muslims, there are Jewish people, and you're saying that if they don't believe like you do, that they're condemned? He didn't say they were going to hell. He said they were, that they're condemned. And so I, I've, I saw that, and I went, wow, that is an amazing question. And, and so here we are, you know, how would, we, how would we deal with that question? You know, especially in a setting like that. Well, the thing is that Jesus already answered that. And, and uh, you know, there's so many things. I was telling someone last night, there's so many answers that came to mind, you know, uh, that uh, if they asked that question, um, you'd say, well, it's really not, uh, you shouldn't be concerned about what I think. You should be more concerned about what God thinks. But you've got to believe in God first. And you've got to believe in this. This right here. This is, what, this is what we stand on right here. And what it says. And, what God, and who God is. Okay? And <clears throat> it's really interesting because it's not even part of this. But, I, but it was just very interesting because John 3.16 tells it. It, it kind of goes to that. And, and it, uh, you know, for God so loved the world, we, we all know that. Uh, they gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, have everlasting life. <laughs> but then you go to 17, for God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world. Okay? But that the world through him might be saved. He who believes in him is not condemned. But he who does not believe is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. So, 
So there you go. And so do we, you know, in, in answering, I mean, I thought about, well, what would the Apostle Paul have said? Oh, he would have carved him up, you know, <laughs> every which way that you could, you know. And uh, there's just, I mean, but he, you know, this man answered it very, he said, I believe that we're all created uh, in God's image and that we all deserve respect and, and, uh, and all. And so he, he gave a really nice answer. But, um, but I, you know, you just wonder what, he would, what would have happened if he would have said, uh, uh, yeah, they're all condemned. If they don't believe, if they don't believe in Jesus, they're going to hell. What would what would that have? What would headlines would that have made, right? Uh, and so, so anyway, uh, and it's you know, and I'm thinking about it. You know, it's not, it's not us. I mean, I thought, okay, so, so the radical Muslim faith, uh, their their thing is, if you don't believe the way we do, we're going to kill you. Christianity says, if you don't believe the way we do, God's going to take care of it. Okay. So um, that's why that's so important what that book says. And that's what we're, gonna, that's what we're about. So we're going to talk about hope today. And like I said, we look at the hopelessness in the world and all that stuff. But you know what? This world is not my home. I'm just passing through. And I pray that you guys will keep that in your minds and your hearts, okay? Don't get, don't get consumed with all the stuff, all the negative, all the, the, the evil, the bad, and the, all the ugly that's going on <clears throat> in the world. Because this, this is, we are in this world, but we're not of it. This is not, our kingdom is with Jesus. And one of these days, one of these days soon, we'll be with him together. And we won't have to worry about it anymore. We won't have to worry about it anymore. Oh, I'm, so, I'm so looking forward to that day, to that day. So in, in preparing this, I thought, let me start out with a, maybe a funny story about waiting, because we're going to talk about waiting and uh, you would, I guess you'd have to know my mom. <laughs> you'd have to know my mom. Uh, but mom was very witty, very funny, very funny lady. Um, and, uh, but she also was, she was a heavy lady, okay? She battled uh, weight issues pretty much all over. Actually, this came to me. I'll just go ahead and share it with you. She didn't have weight issues until she had me. Right, Dad? Yeah. It was, it, was after, it was after I was born, and that was, that was it. I, I was her downfall. So there we go. 64 years ago, there it is. So, but Mom, Mom would, she just, she was very funny. I mean, most, a lot of you in here knew who she was. So this funny story about waiting. She took me somewhere, um, and, um, and she had to wait for me to, to do whatever I was doing. So she's sitting there waiting and a lady comes up and sits by her and says, are you waiting for a child? And mom says, no, I'm just fat. <laughs> That's the only mom could do. She would, bless her heart, she would, I was, you know, when I was young, I, I was a skinny rail you know, trying to, I was trying my best to gain weight. Now I'm trying to keep it off. Trying my best to, to gain weight. Couldn't do it. I had this metabolism burning and eating like a horse. Just, ah, no, no gain weight. So mom, so we found out that there was this, this, this uh, drink called Nutriment. And uh, there, there was a weight gainer. So, so she, went to the, she went to the store, to, to the store where they sold it, and said, I want a case of Nutriment. <laughs> and the clerk said, oh, no, you don't want that, ma'am. She said, it's not for me. <laughs> it's not even Mother's Day. I had to share those. Waiting, waiting. Oh. I miss that. Right? You, uh, you that came last, uh, last Sunday night, um, the apple doesn't fall far from the tree if you saw Dad up here leading songs and didn't, didn't want to stop singing. That's, uh, you know, I get, I get that from Dad, uh, bless his heart. That's next, uh, next Sunday. We're going to honor Dad's next Sunday. But, um, but anyway, yeah, just uh, I got that from Dad. I got some of Mom's wit. Hopefully it's funny. Uh, <clears throat> the best of both worlds. 
Right, Dad? Hebrews 6 tells us about hope. This hope we have. This is just such a powerful passage. Such a powerful... You know, that's why... This is, I'm going to read this, but this is, this is why communion is so... Oh, so powerful and so awesome. This hope we have as an anchor of the soul. I anchor my soul. Oh, this, here comes the songs. I mean, it's just what... This hope we have as an anchor of the soul, both sure and steadfast, and which enters the presence behind the veil, where the forerunner has entered for us, even Jesus, having become high priest forever. Well, glory. I get those glory bumps. That, that just, I, I just love that. I love that. Forever. It used to be once a year in the Old Testament. Once a year the high priest would go in to take it up. And now then, Jesus says it is finished. The veil. Whoosh. Now then, here we are, right into the Holy of Holies. Because of Jesus and his shed blood. Oh my goodness, he's right there. Right there, interceding for all of us. The Greek word for hope denotes confident expectation or anticipation. It's not wishful thinking. The Hebrew word for hope, that was the Greek uh, definition. The Hebrew definition signifies is to wait with expectation. The main object of, ex of expectant waiting or hope is God. He is our hope. His word, his judgment, his mercy. Psalm 33, 18 says, Behold, the eye of the Lord is on those who fear him, on those who hope in his mercy. And that hope is not misplaced. For the one in whom we hope is completely faithful to his promises. Hebrews 10.23 says, Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering. For he who promised is faithful. He's faithful. Right, Connie? Amen. The Apostle Paul tells us in Titus 1 that God cannot lie. He promises salvation to those that know his Son. It's the hope of eternal life. And in Romans 15, Paul says, Now may the God of hope, he is, he is the God of hope, fill you with all joy and peace in believing, that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. That you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. That's what, that's what, he's, that's what the God of hope does. Therefore, we wait with expectation. Now, the world we live in doesn't do waiting well, okay? Sherry already mentioned our, our traffic situation. Anybody can, after church, somebody please come up and tell me there's an easier way to get to Santa Cruz. There is no easy way to get over there or back. It, 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 the payoff better be good in order, to, in order to put up with all that stuff to get there. And it was, it was, to, to see little Noah and all the kids and their faces and how much fun they had, it was worth the traffic. So we were coming home, you know, I thought, okay, all right, I'm going to go back, I'm going to go back Highway 1 and I'm going to go on down to, to Castroville and go that, go that way instead of fighting because I knew, because we left at 5.30 on a Friday, on a Friday, 5.30. So I knew, I knew. 17, you know, 880, you know, 680, 580. It's just going to be parking lot city, right? I'm going to outsmart them. I'm going to go Highway 1. And I'm going to go to Castroville and go, go 156 and go up over Pacheco Pass. No, it wasn't good. It wasn't good. We were sitting in traffic, just sitting there. Like I, said, I said, where in the world are all these people going? And, and Noah said, <clears throat> to my party, Papa. It's all about Noah, Friday. It's, uh, it's easy to um, get in for that, all that frustration in, in traffic. We can allow ourselves to let it develop into road rage if we're not careful. Okay? 
it's easy to do, to, especially, I mean, depending on how you're feeling, what, I mean, what the situation is, it can just be, there's not too many times that you get in a car and you get stuck in traffic, people are doing stuff, and you go, oh, that's wonderful, just take your time, it's okay, we got nothing else to do, fine, sure, yeah, park right, that's fine, yes, sit right there in that turn lane forever, yes, that's why I got to keep watching that video, I mean, I got to keep, pray, I, oh, pray my way through, and I know that I'm not alone here, right? <laughs> And we become impatient and stressed out in waiting lines at the grocery store. Ugh. You guys, I'm telling you. We're upset by the people in line ahead of us who often have three separate orders that they have to pay for separately, right? I'm getting there. <laughs> three separate orders. They're not prepared to pay for any of them when they get there. They're showing the clerk... Pictures of grandkids, and, they be, and that clerk has become their best friend somehow. And you're sitting there waiting. And you're going, well, that would be Pastor Grammy Sherry, who's guilty of all that. <laughs> She's guilty of all of it. Of course, I fit into the road rage category. So if you fit into any of these categories I just listed, would you respond by saying I? All those who are perfect may respond by saying nay. Very good. Very good. Doug and Teresa, how you guys doing? Are you doing good? Doug, I know you spend a lot of time on the road. Does this ring a bell? Yes, it does. Absolutely. It doesn't matter what line I get in at the store. It doesn't matter. It could be, it says express. It says express lane. 15 items or less. There again, somehow, the person in front of or two people in front of they, they have to go and check a price or something. I mean, it's just, I say, really? Scan it and let's go. We got things to do, places to go, people to meet. Let's go. But no, no. They're talking about having a barbecue later on or whatever. So we agree that when we don't, that we don't do waiting well, but the Bible plainly tells us that those that wait on the Lord will renew their strength, that they will run and not be weary, and they will walk and not be faint. Isaiah 40. You guys get ready, because we're going we're gonna to do something here in a second. Isaiah 40 says, Have you not known, wonderful people of St. John's, have you not known, have you not heard, the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, neither faints nor is weary? His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the weak and to those who have no might. He increases strength. Oh, that's me. That's me. But let's finish it up. Those that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Teach me, Lord, teach me, Lord, to wait. Oh, that was beautiful. That was beautiful, you guys. I'm serious. It was like a heavenly angel choir. Teach us to wait, Lord. Are you weary today? Are you discouraged today? You feel overwhelmed in your soul by trouble and trials? I have good news. I have good news. The creator of the universe, who is highly exalted, has no equal. He loves us so much that he bends down his ear to hear us whenever we call on him. That's the good news today. He knows and he hears what's going on in your life. Verse 27 of Isaiah 40 says, Tell us, tells us that our way is not hidden from him. He has not forgotten us. Psalm 34, 6, This poor man called, and the Lord heard him. He saved him out of all of his troubles. Psalm 34 is great. We sang a great song last night, Taste and See. Taste and See that the Lord is good. There's another good song. We had sang about three good songs last night. How many songs did we do last night? Four, three or four? Four? Nah, that was, just three of them were good. Just kidding. Just kidding. I love joy. Joy is great. 
Yes, yes. Good Father is a great song. And the river, okay? So in a couple of weeks, July the 2nd, on a, actually it'll be July 1st on the Saturday night, we need to sing that, okay? We're going to have a message on July 2nd about thirst. Thirst. It's a great, I was sitting there going, wow, what a great song. Okay, just a little plug for Saturday night. We had a great time last night. When we are discouraged or faint of heart, we are instructed to pray and call out to the Lord. Of course, sometimes that's, we don't feel like it. We don't feel, when we are going through a trial and you are just down and feel like you're beat up, you don't feel like praying. That's why it's great to have a wonderful family that prays that stands in the gap, that stands in the gap. We had people today. We had people today that were standing in the gap for people that couldn't pray because they were sick, because they're going down a wrong path. They, need, they needed prayer, and they couldn't do it. They, did, they knew they wouldn't, so they're standing in the gap. Oh, church, that's why. That's why we need to gather together, build up one another, ex, just exalt, yes, exhort one another, pray for one another, lift each other up, encourage one another. Prayer and discouragement moves God to work freely within us. Prayer lifts our burdens and brings us into submission to the perfect will of God who is able to use every circumstance of our lives for our good. I, this, this is so, so true, and I know that every, I'm not, everybody in here has experienced this. I know you have. I, rem, I just remember having a difficult time years ago forgiving somebody. I said I did in faith, but I would keep picking it up. I couldn't, I couldn't turn it loose. Just being honest here, church. And then, I, and then of course, in my reading, and, and God says, not only do you forgive him, but you pray for him. And I said, what? Pray for him? Ugh. But let me tell you, that right there is what does it. You can say you forgive, and you can say, okay, all right, I'm going to forgive him. All right, I'm forgiven. But now then you start praying for that, for that person that has hurt you or offended you. It's a whole different deal. Now then God says, okay, now then I'm going to come in and I'm going to heal that. And he did. Now that I don't have to lug it around anymore. Because he healed it. Because I took that next step. I took the next step. Okay, Lord, I forgive him. Go to the person and forgive. But now then you pray for him. So, when you do that, when you bring your burdens, when you bring all this stuff and you submit to his perfect will, he's able to use every circumstance of our lives for our good. I had to do, I needed that. I can't, you can't carry that around. You cannot. It'll weigh you down. It'll keep, God, it'll keep God's blessing from flowing through you freely. It's a block there. Trouble in our lives can be a curse to us or it can be a blessing. It all depends on how it's received by us. During the time of trouble, we are encouraged by Scripture to turn to God, to seek His presence and His will in our difficulty and to, and to ask Him to use it for our good. Difficulties and trials in our lives either move us to prayer, causing us to draw near to God, or they drive us further away, shutting into, shut into it our own world of misery. Our own, I'm telling you, you go down that road, and, and it's a miserable road. I know that I know that I'm. Everybody can un identify with this. We've all. I believe we've all done this. E. M. Bounds, a preacher and author on the subject of prayer, wrote, "The sun can either soften the wax, or harden the clay. The sun can either melt the ice, or dry out moisture from the earth." I'll say that again. The sun can either soften the wax, or harden the clay. And it can either melt the ice or dry out moisture from the earth. It's a blessing or a curse. How we respond matters. During long years of trouble and uncertainty, the prophet Isaiah reminded the Israelites not to fear, not to give up because they had all, the all-powerful and all-knowing God on their side. He's all-knowing, all-powerful on our side. He encouraged them to put their hope and trust in the one true God, even though they did not have all the answers to their questions or see an end to their trials. Talked about that last week. 
Pastor Chuck, when you look back on the, on the Israelites, man, <laughs> he said, we've said it, how stupid can they be? Well, we can be that way too. I can. And no matter all the great things that God has done in my life, and I can go through a time and go, okay, God, what, what's this? Where are you? What's going on? We too must place our trust in God, who has assured us that all things will work together for the good to those who love him. So while we may be unsure about our present situation and even more uncertain about our future, we can be sure that God will be there to accomplish his purposes in our lives and that they will be for our good. Jeremiah 29, 11. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you a future and a hope. Then you will call upon me and go and pray to me. And I will listen to you, and you will seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart. And you will seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart. Peace, in spite of circumstances, can't be about what is happening to us. Peace and contentment come from the one in whom we trust the one in whom we have placed our hope, the one we wait for with expectation. So when trials and troubles come, and they will come, we must cultivate contentment so that we will not reap bitterness. The first step is prayer. Let your request be made known to God. Remember who is in control. Romans 8, 26. Likewise, the Spirit also helps in our weaknesses, for we do not know what we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Now he who searches the hearts knows what the mind of the Spirit is because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. Pretty powerful right there, right? And we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are the called according to his purpose. You are the called. You guys know that you're the called? pretty cool isn't it cool it's pretty awesome isn't it cool is so anemic ask for God's strength Philippians 4 13 I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me whatever you're going through I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me sometimes God changes our situation and sometimes he changes our hearts but he is always working on our behalf on our behalf we can believe him for the strength we need today Today. I need you today. That's why I love that song more than ever before. Lord, I love you. More than ever before, Lord, I need you. More than ever before, I want to tell you I love you now more than ever before. Trust in God. Trust in his plan for good. What we, can, what we can't see, when we can't see the light ahead of, ahead of us, then, uh, and the answers aren't clear, trust in the Lord with all of your heart. And lean not on your own understanding, and all your ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct your path. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. We show our trust for God through our love for him and our obedience to his word. When we respond to him with love and obedience, we can trust that he is working all things together for our good. Trust is the word we were given at the beginning of this year. For some of us, that has become a powerful word as we walk through unexpected and certainly unwanted seasons of difficulty. And we're only halfway through the year. Rebuke bitterness. Reject any thoughts in your mind that have their root in bitterness. Bitterness can consume you, choking out your fellowship with the Lord and destroying the bond of trust that you have established. Rebuke anxiety. Don't, be, uh, don't let anxiety or fear rule your mind. Paul says, be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God and the peace of God. And the peace of God, which surpasses understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Okay? Be anxious for nothing. Yeah, but Paul didn't... You read what Paul had to go through. I told somebody the other day, <clears throat> you know, I believe that, of course, he... Jesus showed up on the Damascus Road, changed his whole life. He saw him. And then, and then he took him into heaven and showed him what heaven was like. And I, and I, wondered, I thought, you know, I was just wondering. It's just me wondering if, if Jesus didn't show him all that because he knew what he was going to go through 
down here on earth. All of the beatings, the shipwrecks, the, you know, the stonings, the, you know, the imprisonments, all of the stuff, the, the incredible ministry that God gave, gave Paul to do. And he, Paul needed to see something to help him through all that. And that's why he could say, be anxious for nothing. Hey, I've gone through all this stuff. Anxious for nothing. Rejoice. As the Apostle Paul says, rejoice in the Lord. Rejoice in the Lord always and again I say rejoice. Yeah, there you go. Regardless of the circumstances, whether good or bad, whether we are full or hungry, whether we are rich or poor, whether we are well or suffering physically, thank the Lord. Don't let circumstances dictate your joy or your faith or your trust. He who has begun a good work in you will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. God is doing a work in us that will not stop until Jesus returns or he takes us home. So press in to the Lord. While you still live and breathe, seek him daily. Pray and read his word. Don't look back at past mistakes. Don't let regret or your present circumstances restrain you. Instead, press forward. Leap out in faith, knowing that only he can catch you. Leap out there in faith. I mentioned it last night. I, I always have this image about a leap of faith. Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. Okay? Some of you may have seen it, and some of you may not have. But it's a powerful... Um, it's a powerful image. Um, man, a lot of it just, just le uh, left me. I'm 64 now, and things leave me without even... <clears throat> Illustrated sermon, thank you. Thank you, Lord. Illustrated sermon. And do you guys remember what that is when he had to do the three, th three things, you know, kneel before Joe, and then he had to do his leap of faith. And he's looking, he's a leap of faith, and he's got this incredible chasm out here that's bottomless, can't even, there's bottomless. He's got to get to the other side, okay? And he just says, just step out, and it'll be there. Boy, is that just a great analogy for us as believers? What God wants us to do, just step out, and it'll be there. And you go, whoa, he is there. That's a powerful image for us to always keep in mind when we're taking a leap of faith. Psalm 31, 24 says, Be of good courage, and he shall strengthen your heart, all you who hope in the Lord. Psalm 119 says, I rise before the dawning of the morning and cry for help. I hope in your word. And finally, repeating from Romans 15, 13, as we started, Now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. He is that hope, our blessed hope. And he's coming back to get us, our blessed hope. Don't get discouraged. Don't get down. Don't, don't get all just, no, my hope is in the Lord. And you just keep praying and believing and trusting him. Father, we love you and thank you for your word today. <clears throat> thank you, give, you give us your word, and your word says you can trust this. Our hope is in you. Our hope is in your word. Our hope is in your promises, which you tell us in the, in the Bible. And we stand on that, and we believe it, and we treasure it. And as we walk through this life, and it's looking hopeless for so many things going on in life, but Lord, our hope is in you. And Lord, as we <clears throat> look to you, and we take our leap of faith and we say okay lord even though my circumstances my trials don't look good i'm going to take i'm going to trust you i'm trusting you my hope is in you i'm waiting on you because you're going to renew my strength and now i'm going to mount up with wings like eagles and i'm going to run and not be weary and i'm going to walk and not faint because i'm going to wait on you lord and you're going to renew me and strengthen me lord thank you that we have your word in us and we can live it out every day oh thank you for that Lord, I just pray, Lord, for my wonderful family and friends here, oh, that you brought here today to minister to. Lord, as they walked through these doors, they sensed your presence. They knew, Lord, that this was a place that you abide, for this is 
the temple, Jehovah God, you abide here and we're standing in your presence on holy ground. Lord, we know that. We feel it. We sense it. We thank you for it. Now, Lord, I just pray that you will bless everybody here today with your word, your presence, your guidance in their lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Can you stand with me? We're going to sing. We're going to sing a final song. Solid Rock. I believe it's on page 310 in your, uh, in your books. The only problem is when you get those books out, you're going to mess up all my little things here. I've got... <laughs> now I've got to go around and fix them all. That's okay. That's all right. No problem. We're going to... Is it, on the, is it going to be on the screen, David? Good. Okay, so if you don't want to look at the book, you can, or you can look at the screen. Christ the solid rock. He's who we stand on. Okay? My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. When darkness seems to hide his face, I rest on his unchanging grace. In every high and stormy gale, my anchor holds within the veil. Sing it. shall come with trumpet sound. Oh, may I then in him be found, dressed in his righteousness alone, faultless to stand before the throne. Oh. Rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is... One more time, the chorus. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. Hey Amen. Oh, what a great, what a great hymn. I hope that's in your heart this week. Hey, next week is Father's Day. You guys have a great week. It's going to get hot. It's going to get hot. By Friday, triple digits. Oh boy, enjoy the coolness while you have it. God bless you guys. Thank you.